な。Guns and Roses. We're doing more Guns and Roses. Hello, welcome to the In the Court of the Winter King. This is the most expensive album ever made. And if you don't call it that, because it's so disappointing. <laughs> uh, in 1974, Richie Blackmore wanted to call the new Deep Purple reunion cashing album. Uh, at last, the 1974 album. Now, he's always been the one who was cynical about it, but the rest of the band got annoyed that they said, he said it was about money, and it was about money. That was a joke, though. Because <laughs> this really is, at last, the 1995 album in 2008. Stylist stylistically, definitely. Was it 2008, this? Yeah. That's how long it took. Why? Yeah. Well, I thought it was quite a recent release. It feels like it, doesn't it? Yeah. They haven't done anything since. Eight years ago. <laughs> so technically, 14 years in development, technically. It's like computer game development hell. It doesn't really happen with albums. <laughs> uh, Duke Nukem. Yeah, it's something I'll just throw it away and start with the new technology again. And you, it'll only happen with albums if it's terrible and they don't actually release the, the original album, they'll do something else. Well, it happens in films, doesn't it? Remember... Um... Mm. What's that one, The Lone Ranger? Yeah. This is better than I expected, but it's not amazing, I suppose. But it's also different. And that was the real thing, was that I, I hadn't heard the song from End of Days. I wasn't aware of a change. So when it came, I remember when it came out and I listened to it like once, it was different. A real noticeable absence of slash. The guitar is boring. I think a really 90s compressed production sound, which is weird because they made a point of saying... They, they chose not to go compression route and the loudness was in the mix, so they didn't have a loud mix. Because to me, that's, just, that's what it sounds like. Really Aussie sounding. The vocals sound, he sounds like Aussie a lot of the time. But we said that last week. But also, the musical style, really modern day Aussie, very much. Uh, the guitar is boring. Faux heaviness. Um, you know, which uh, the Slash stuff would never fall into that fall into that. Uh, there are lots of boring riffs, but arguably most of them always were. Modern production uh, samples. Lots of samples. It's industrial stuff. It makes it safer but slicker than the previous stuff. There's nothing wrong with being slicker. I mean, that's, that's good, isn't it? You know, and if you're going to take 14 years, it's going to be very slick, isn't it? But it's really quite different. If you go back to Appetite, it's such a different album. So really, the argument is this is the Axl Rose band, isn't it? And that's not Guns N' Roses. Is this actually... That's, you know. Is this actually a band production or is this an Axl Rose Axl Rose production? It can't be a band production because they've had different people through the exactly. band. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I got the impression from it. I, this is sort of it, it. It. We we said in the last one. I sort of reappraised my sort of impression of Axl Rose, and this this did it even more because this is sort of this is an auteur autumn yeah. or, almost. Yeah. Coming up with something, and they in my it's up to judgment whether it's whether it's any good or or not, but it. It makes me interested in the processes that go into sort of yeah, produce, which brings it out to something else, you know, other than just a sort of straight rock album. My impression is Appetite for Destruction was a band. It was like they got these guys got together, yeah, they wanted to be in a band, and Appetite for Destruction hit, and then Axl Rose was the one who actually wanted more than that, you know, Axl Rose wanted to make music, and this is him sort of either looking at someone like Bowie or or someone like that and want yeah. to be that that sort of thing, but. The only brand he's got is Guns N' Roses. Yeah. To actually sell albums, so he's got to do it under the sort of the Guns N' Roses banner. Yeah. And actually, had he done it in 1993, he could have done a solo album. Yeah. Actually, but not not now, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it sounds more like a 2000s Aussie album than Guns N' Roses, actually, I think. Um, and there's almost latter day dream theatre ness occasionally. Not, not, yeah. not like proggy groove and stuff, but I mean, in the sound and things. Um, nothing wrong with that at all, you know. And obviously everyone talked about it's industrial. He's a big fan of Nine Inch Nails and all that sort of stuff. And there is that definitely that in there. Samples and produced and etc. Um, but it isn't just that. And he made a really good point. He played that down. And people will disagree maybe. But Queen. He said Queen. And he realised, oh yeah. You think not, not necessarily just early Queen. I mean the whole of Queen. There's something there. And he likes the production of it. And, and, and the, the construction of it like that. And that's definitely, definitely there. In some ways that's more subtle than the older stuff. In some ways it's generic and bland. Is there anything as good on there as Coma or Welcome to the Jungle? Probably not. Is there something as boring as whatever song I've forgotten already? <laughs> um, no, there isn't. There's, so there's nothing banal on there in the way there's banal stuff on these illusion. Um, but there's nothing as good as the really good stuff, I reckon. Mercifully, 
It's only 70 minutes long. <laughs> Time's one. <laughs> oh, why did we review all these together? Well, I didn't realise it was like that long. I thought, you know, we that can't. lesson. But to be fair, it doesn't feel as long as it usually is, no. No. It, it flows properly. It actually does sag slightly at the beginning because Chinese democracy is all right. Yeah, I noticed but, that. But then it sort of sags at the beginning and then by the end you're actually... Yeah. You're thinking, this is this it, too bad. He's enough. done that, hasn't yeah. it? I think that's from years and years of knowing the songs. And thinking very carefully about it, that's the way to play it. Because yeah. people are going to sit through the whole thing because it's Guns, new Guns N' Roses album. They're not going to listen to one song and think, oh, it's shit. No. no. I was actually quite impressed. I mean, you've got songs like Catcher in the Rye, you know. Maybe he's trying, you know, maybe there's a sort of element of growing up there. Yeah. I'm no longer the, the arsehole who, you know, yeah. does loads of drugs and. Yeah, and, and thinks it's cool because yeah. I said the naughty word on the record. Wow. Now he's trying to prove himself as an artist almost. Because, you know, Guns N' Roses, that usual illusion was all about sex and, and drugs and stuff like that. Mm. Which this doesn't, this is a politically, this is, you know, <laughs> Chinese and it's a, a, a politically yeah. motivated sort of, and that was, sort of thing. That was the thing in an interview when he, it was, it was years before the album came out when he said something terrible. That, oh yeah, because there are movements for democracy in China. So that's a good thing to write about. But I just think it sounds good. And you think, oh, God. <laughs> Flexion, yeah, yeah, it's good. That's, you know, yeah. that's cool, that's cool. Yeah, it gives it a sort of a danger. I suppose he, he's, he's moving along with the times. Now we're in a very, uh, in a time where politics can be very controversial. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah. At the time of recording, in fact, that, that this day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I, sometimes, but not, you know, not bad. I, I am interested, if, if he released something else, I would be interested in listening to it. Yeah, I mean, it is, I, went, I mean, you get back to 2008, it is, in a way, it's disappointing that he, didn't, he wasn't then freed to carry on making music, and he hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> That's it now. Probably there might be another one. No, well, it might be another 10 years or whatever, but if it did, you know, I'd listen to it. I mean, no, I would, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I might not listen to Chinese Democracy again, but it was definitely good. I'd That's definitely listen to another one. Yeah, I, I might give it a go again. Sort of like this, his voice... I mean, he still tries to do the thing, but mm. I don't think he can do it as well. So there's there's a bit more... Technique. Yeah. Yeah, or, or the technique was always there, but because he, he was a kid and he, he didn't look after himself, it sounded different. And actually now, partially probably because of the, the recording, it is the, all, every note is, is, is perfect, and da, 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 you know and that's why he sounds like Ozzy, actually, because everything's cleaner, which is fine. Lots of people were in the band. <laughs> over the years <laughs> Zach Wilde briefly I think at one point Slash and Zach Wilde might have been and then Slash went and then it was going to be Zach Wilde and then it wasn't and then there was Buckethead and then he went as well long before the album came out and then there's some other people I don't know who they are and they're boring I mean there are one of the inherent problems with the album is you know you hear a guitar solo which is pretty bland but yeah. you can yeah. imagine Slash playing it yeah and, and it would Slash would bring, bring <laughs> yeah. whatever he brings to it it's, it's fun so yeah Guitar solos like that have to be fun. And Oz, I mean Ozzy again, you know, and Randy Rhodes is so great make, say, making them sound fun and, and Zach Wilde and Slash. You've got to be, it's, it's over the top and it's silly and over the top and brrrr, and it's great, you know, and if you don't do that, it's, you know, the whole album was re-recorded at least once, completely. So he recorded the whole album and then did it again. Um, and supposedly 2001 to 2004 it was finished. It took that long just to get the thing out there. We didn't mention the spaghetti incident, obviously, because there was another album in between. There was a live album as well, wasn't there, of archive stuff. Um, yeah. Spaghetti incident cover versions with Slashley in the band. I think it's New Rose is the thing everyone remembers, which is a really good version of of the, that damned song. And and the single was something else, though, wasn't it? It was. Was it as long as I have you? Yeah. Yeah. You are no, I didn't. I forgot uh, they released that. Oh, oh so. um, Sympathy for the Devil was that on Spaghetti Incident? Or was that for a, for a film, maybe? That was around that year, anyway, yeah. wasn't it? I didn't really, I, I didn't really like Sympathy of the Devil. I love the no. original. I don't think it suited his voice. Pleased to meet you! Rather than, pleased to meet you, Londoner. Mm. Yep, yeah, songwriting still top notch. It's still inconsistency, not in quality, just in, in interestingness. It can be a bit boring. Uh, and there's moments of excellence and there's moments of meh. But it's the, you know, the dancey rhythms. I suspect there's no drum machines on there. I bet there's triggers on there. I bet there's someone playing it, but it's not really them, their sound. And uh, the funkiness in there as well. And, you know, surprising, obviously, and that's a good thing. Because another Guns N' Roses album that sounded like Usual Illusion would have been the most boring thing ever. Oh, it would have been terrible, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
Uh, there was a song in 1999 uh, from the movie End of Days. I didn't hear it at the time. I was, you know, obviously, I, by then I was no, not interested in any of that. Didn't use it on the album, but it's important because it, it pointed the change. It's very industrial and all that stuff. But yeah, like you said, he, he, there's a Queen influence. He's thinking about Queen. He's not thinking about Nine Inch Nails. But that, both of those things are there, I think. The problem is, I mean, it doesn't matter how good it is. By, by, the, by this time, no one cared. Yeah, he only got to number three. And the ship has sailed. Yeah, the industry's collapsed. <laughs> he would have made millions if he'd released it in 1995, you know. 1998, yeah, no one's buying records. The vocals are less annoying, like we said, particularly the high stuff, because he's maybe he's looking at his voice, but he's also having to be careful, more careful with his voice, maybe, because he can't yeah, anymore. But he, he was so good on ACDC, that does point, actually, he was just a stupid kid not looking after his voice, and he's got a fantastic voice. Yeah. Whether you like the... the style. Yeah, the style, which is kind of horrible. I think, I think the title is crap. The, the principle of it and the, the lyrics, that's great. I think as a title of an album, I think it's... What do you mean, Chinese democracy? What are well, you talking about? I think it was sort of playing on the, the most dangerous band in the world sort of thing. Now he's taking on the Chinese Chinese government sort of thing. <laughs> Controversy. <laughs> uh, yeah, in which case, twat. <laughs> it's got to shift albums, you know. It's taken... That long to record. It had a working title, didn't it? I can't remember what it was now. It wasn't called to Chinese Democracy originally. All the Things Be You, or something completely innocuous. Yeah. Yeah. Probably it was just a working title, it wasn't the real title at all. Yeah, so to Egg, I'm going to say three eggs. Now remember, I was going to give Usual Illusion three eggs, and it was only because I was very surprised by the, the, the very best of it. Pushed it up to four eggs for me, because there were five egg songs. This one, in, there's a couple of four egg songs, but I think the album is three eggs. I'm going to give it three eggs, but it's a very good three eggs. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll agree with that. But, it, you know, it, get, it, it is notable in the sense that, actually, it should have been a complete pile of horse poo. Yeah, and it was good. And, and it's, it's a not. good album. Yeah. 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 We should have been sitting here saying either one or two eggs. Yeah. Yeah. But also, there's, you know, we've got to keep the eggs down. Keep the eggs down, man. The eggs are too high. Too many five eggs. Keep those eggs down. Yeah. Well, we're, 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 we, we tend to review bands that we actually like. Yeah, so it's, yeah, everything's going to be four eggs. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's Guns N' Roses. Sorry we did four. Done. We're not going to do the spaghetti incident unless you actually <laughs> beg. Even then, we're not going to do it. I don't want to do it. Down on the farm. Actually, Down on the Farm was my favourite. Oh. It was um, Since I Don't Have You. Yeah. It was the single, wasn't it? Oh, no, so it's not on there. It's not it's on there. Since the Devil's is a single. Yes, and we'll see you next week. We might as well. I think we've already told everyone, so... So, I can't remember when I told people, but somebody knew. <laughs> when we did Guns N' Roses, they were like, what, no, you're right heap? I didn't know we said you're doing right heap. But yeah, yeah, next week, you're right heap. Great band, and it's in, from the 70s. And it's proper, <laughs> all of this business, posing stuff. They look ridiculous, and they're, but they're a good band, you know. You're right heap.